I, I, I'm kind of bearish on, okay. on, okay. on true AGI breakthrough okay. because what we built is so useful and economically valuable. Uh, so oh, in a way, good enough, good enough as the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you remember that essay? Um, worse is better. Worse is better. Worse is better. Worse yeah. is better. Yeah. And, 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 and so there's like a local, there's like a trap. There's like a local, local maximum trap. Right. We're in a local maximum. So everyone keeps talking about AGI, artificial general intelligence, like it's right around the corner. But the majority of people can't even agree on what the definition of AGI even is. Some say it's when an AI can do any task a human can do. Others say it's when it can learn on its own, drop it into any environment, and it just figures things out. And some believe we already have it, or at least some primitive early version of it. But according to Replit CEO Amjad Massad and venture capitalist Mark Andreessen, it's not that we're defining AGI wrong, it's that we're thinking about current AI wrong. Because the systems we're building today, the ones coding apps, making art, generating video, they might not actually be taking us toward real general intelligence. Instead, they're getting better at something else entirely, automating everything that can be measured or verified. And that's exactly what Amjad explains here in this first clip. That's a resurgence of, of that movement where we have this amazing generative uh, neural network that is the, the LLM. And now let's layer on more discrete ways of trying to verify whether it's doing the right thing or not. And let's put that in a training loop. And once you do that, the LLM will start gaining new capabilities such as uh, reasoning over math and code and things like that. Exactly. Right. Okay. And then that's great. And then and then the, the key thing there, though, for, for RL to work, for LLMs to reason, the, the key is that it be a a problem statement that there is a def defined and verifiable answer. That's right. Is that right? And so, and and, and you might think about this as like, uh, let's give a bunch of examples. Like in medicine, this might be like, um, you know, a diagnosis that like a panel of human doctors agrees with. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, or by the way, or a diagnosis that actually, you know, solves the condition. Um, in law, this would be a, um, you know, a, a, a argument that in front of a jury actually results in an acquittal mm -hmm. uh, or, or something like that. Um, in uh, math, it's an equation that actually solves properly. Mm -hmm. uh, in physics, it's a result that actually works in the real world. Mm -hmm. I don't know. In civil engineering, it's a bridge that doesn't collapse, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so there, there, there's always some some test. Caveat of premise. is okay, that the first two do not work very well. Okay. just yet. Okay. Like the the like, I would say. Uh, law and healthcare, they're still a little too squishy, a little too soft. Okay. It's unlike math okay. or code. Like the way that they're training on math, they're using this uh, sort of like a program language, uh, provable language called lean for proofs, right? Mm -hmm. So you can run a lean statement. You can run a computer code. Uh, perhaps you can run a physics simulation or civil engineering uh, sort of physics simulation, but uh, you can't run a diagnosis. Okay. So... Uh, I would say that, but you could verify it with human answers, or or not. Yeah, so it, that that's a more or, RL HF right. in a way. Okay, so right. it, it okay. is not the like sort of autonomous RL train, okay. like fully scalable autonomous. Okay, th which is why coding is moving faster than any other domain is okay. because we can we, we we can generate these problems and verify them on the fly. So this is an important point because when OpenAI, for example, says their new coding model is good at math too. It's not that a coding model suddenly figured out how to do math. It's that when that same architecture is trained on math, it performs well. In other words, it's not exactly general intelligence. It's more like transfer of knowledge within a narrow, verifiable domain. And that's what leads to the bigger question Mark Andreessen brings up next. Are we actually on the path to AGI? Or just incrementally improving our current systems? Take a look curious your point of view on this like there's this weird dynamic that we have and we have this in the office here a lot and i also have this with like the leading edge entrepreneurs a lot which is this thing of like like wow this is the most amazing technology ever and it's moving really fast and yet we're still like really disappointed yeah. um <laughs> and like it's not moving fast enough mm -hmm. and like it's right like maybe right on the verge of stalling out mm -hmm. and like you know we should both be like hyper excited but also on the verge of like slitting our wrists because <laughs> like you know it's a, the yeah. gravy train is coming to an end right and and I always wonder, it's like, you know, on the one hand, it's like, okay, like, you know, not all, I don't know, ladders go to the moon, like, just because something, you know, looks like it works or, you know, doesn't mean it's going to, you know, be able to scale, you're going to be able to scale it up and have it work, you know, to the fullest extent. Um, uh, you know, so like, it, it's important to like recognize practical limits and to not just extrapolate everything to infinity. Um, on the other hand, like, you know, we're dealing with magic here that we, I think, probably all would have thought was impossible five years ago or yeah. certainly 10 years ago. Like, I, I didn't, you know, look, I, I, you know, I got my CS degree in the late 80s, early 90s. I, I never, I didn't think I would live to see 
see any yeah. of this, right? Like, oh, this is just amazing that this is actually happening in, in, in my lifetime. Um, but but, but th- th- there's a huge bet on AGI, yeah. right? Like whether it's the foundation models, uh, I think you know, now the entire U.S. economy is sort of a, <laughs> a bet on AGI. And, and there are crucial questions to ask whether are we on track to AGI or not. Right. Because there are some ways that I can tell you it doesn't seem like we're on track to AGI because we uh, because there doesn't seem to be transfer learning across these domains that are that are you know significant, right? right. And so if we get a lot better at code we're not immediately getting better at like generalized reasoning. We need to go also, you know, get training data and create RL environment for bio or chemistry or physics or math right. or law or so. so and this, this has been the sort of point of discussion now in the AI community after the Dwarkish and Richard Sutton uh, interview where, uh, you know, Richard Sutton kind of poured this cold water on the, um, uh, on the bitter lesson. So everyone was using this, uh, essay that he wrote called The Bitter Lesson, the idea is that there are um, infinitely scalable ways of uh, doing uh, uh, AI research. And, 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 and anytime you can pour more compute and more data and get more performance out, you're just, you, you know, that's the ultimate way of getting to AGI. And some people, you know, interpreted that interview that perhaps he's doubtful that even we're even on a on a bitter uh, lesson path here, right. and perhaps the current training regime is actually very much the opposite, in which we we are so dependent on human data and human annotation and and all of that stuff. Right. So I think that the, I, I agree with you. I mean. As a company, we're we're excited about where things are headed, but but there's there's a question of like, are we on track to AGI or not? And, right. So, in other words, maybe the problem isn't that we're not making progress because we certainly are. It's that we're measuring it by the wrong goal. Because even if we never reach that holy grail version of AGI, whatever that ends up meaning, we might still get something that feels just as transformative. What Amjad calls functional AGI. Basically, if you can collect enough data on every useful economic activity and train a large model to automate each one, you don't necessarily get a general mind. You get an entire digital labor force. And that might be exactly where we're headed. But that's maybe the other side of it, which is they're also putting out for themselves um, uh, an unreasonable goal. An, an, an unreasonable goal, and then yeah. doing this sort of self-flagellation kind of along the way. Right. And, and and I, I kind of wonder, yeah, I, want, I wonder kind of which way that cuts. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting question. Like, I started thinking about this idea of, like, it doesn't matter whether it's truly... AGI and the way I define AGI is that you put in a AI system in any environment and efficiently learns. Right. Um, you know, it doesn't have to have that much prior knowledge in order to kind of learn something, but also can transfer that knowledge across different domains. Um, but you know, we can get to like functional AGI, and what functional AGI is is just yeah, collect data on every uh, useful uh, economic activity in. Uh, in the world today and train an LLM on top of that or train the same foundation model on top of that. And and we'll, we'll go, we'll target every sector of economy and, and you can automate a big part of labor that way. So I think, I think yeah, I think we're on that track right. for sure. So yeah, I actually agree with this. In the early days of AI and ChatGPT, AGI was seen as this super generalized system, something that can learn anything and do everything better than any human. And then ASI, or Artificial Super Intelligence, was the next step of that. A system that can outperform the collective intelligence of all humans combined. But over time, as AI became more mainstream, it feels like that definition quietly shifted and became more about just this super economically valuable system that can replace everyone's jobs. And while real-world jobs are certainly a good measure of capabilities, I still sit closer to Amjad Massad's view. That true AGI would be a system you can drop into any situation with limited prior knowledge and it just figures things out. Like a really smart human, only faster and better. And that's what Amjad describes next, his personal definition of what real AGI would actually look like. But the thing is, and this is where I disagree with him, he's not convinced we'll ever get there. Because the version of AI we already have is so useful, so economically powerful, that it might just keep us stuck right where we are. Check this out. So I, 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 I'm of, of two minds, right? Okay. So one mind is the sort of practical entrepreneur. Right. Uh, and I just, I have so many toys to play yeah. with, to build. Like, 
to stop AI progress today yep. and Repl will continue to get better for the next five years. Yep. Like we have so much we could do just on the app uh, app layer and the infrastructure layer. So, yep. you know, I, but, but I think that will, you know, the, the foundation models will continue to get better as well. And so it's, it's in a very exciting time in our industry. Um, the other mind is more academic yep. because as a kid, I've always been interested in the nature of consciousness, nature of intelligence. Uh, I was always interested in AI and reading the literature there. And I would point to the RL uh, literature. So Richard Sutton, there's another guy, I think co-founder of DeepMind, Shane Legg, wrote wrote a paper trying to define what AGI is. Um, And in there, I think that the definition of AGI, I think, is the is the original, perhaps correct one, which is uh, efficient continual learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if you if you truly want to build an artificial general intelligence that you can drop in any domain, you can drop in a car without that much prior knowledge about cars, and within um, you know how long does it take a human to to learn how to drive? Within months, be able to drive a car really well. Right. So generalized skill, sort of generalized skill acquisition, generalized understanding acquisition, yeah, generalized reasoning acquisition. And I think that's the thing that will like truly change the right. world. That's the thing that would give us a better understanding of of the human mind, of human consciousness, and that's the thing that will like propel us to the next uh, level of human civilization. I think yeah. so. So on a civilization level, I think that's that's a really deep question. Yeah. But, but separate from the economy and the industry, yeah. which is all exciting. But but there's an academic aspect of it that I'm really. And so what and what odds? What if we're, if we're on if we're on Kelsey today? What what odds do we place on that? I, I I'm kind of bearish on okay. on okay. on true AGI breakthrough okay. because what we built is so useful and economically valuable. Uh, so in, oh, in a way, good enough, good do, enough as the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you remember that essay? Um, worse is better. Worse is better. Worse is better. Worse yeah. is better. Yeah. And, 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 and so there's like a local, there's like a trap. There's like a local, local maximum trap. Right. We're in a local maximum, local trap. maximum trap where it's because it's good, because it's good enough for so much economically productive work. Yes. It relieves the pressure um, in the system to create the generalized answer. Yes. And and then you have the weirdos like Rich Sutton and right. others that are still trying to go that down that path and right. maybe they'll succeed. Right. Uh, but there's enormous optimization energy behind right. the current thing right. that we're hell climbing on this like local maximum. Right, right. So yeah, this is an interesting perspective I hadn't really heard of before. And I'm interested to hear what you guys think about it. Do you think we'll truly reach some sort of local maximum with AI? where there isn't even a point in building true AGI anymore? Or do you think we inevitably get there? I certainly hope we do, but I'm starting to think it might be further away than we thought, based on what we're seeing in the space right now. But anyway, thanks for watching. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section. Also drop a like if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button if you're new, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.